And uh, now that we are recording, uh, just as a reminder, we will be sending a link out to everyone once the uh, webinar is over. So um, you don't need to worry about taking notes or, or recording it yourself. We'll, you'll have a link for us. So um, a lot of you are probably have used Time Online a bit in the past. Um, we have a ton of congressional material along with the journals and all the federal materials that we have available within High Online. What we're going to talk about today in particular are a, a, a handful of, live, of databases within High Online. First, we're going to be talking about the U.S. Congressional Documents database. Next, we will be talking about the Government Accountability Office reports and controller general decisions, uh, the U.S. Congressional Serial Set, and we'll touch upon the U.S. statutes at large and the uh, federal legislative history database a little bit as well. So first I want to talk about um, the U.S. congressional documents. I'm going to jump in here. So what is included in our U.S. congressional documents database is first and foremost the congressional record. Um, the congressional record is the official record of proceedings and debates of the United States Congress. So nearly all major and minor policies and concerns of any particular day are discussed and uh, debated within the U.S. congressional record. So um, in terms of how the U.S. congressional record is structured, it's, it comes in, in, I like to say, two flavors. First, uh, the, the uh, bound volume, which started in 1873 it, with volume one, and it is current up to 2015. Um, the U.S. Um, government printing office is just a little bit behind in terms of binding that up and creating a bound volume. It also comes out on, in a daily version. So you can see here, we have the U.S. Congressional Record Daily. We take ours back to 1980, and we are current up to, obviously, uh, the most current material available, which was, is typically um, yesterday. We do sometimes have a little bit of a delay in terms of getting it from, uh, from our source into Han Online, but it typically isn't more than a day. One unique thing that Hein Online does have, and, and I'll jump into this in just a moment, one unique tool that Hein Online has that you may not see or probably won't see in any other uh, database is our Congressional congressional Record Daily to Bound Locator. Um, the Congressional Record Daily and the Congressional Record Bound use two different citing uh, methods. Uh, they have different um, paginations, and it's very hard at times to kind of jump between the two uh, uh, sources to find where the, the same material is located. So if we click on our Congressional Record Daily to Bound Locator, and I'm just going to randomly, we have it already set here as January 1st, 2014. I'm going to just jump forward to January 10th, hit go. You can see what coverage we, we show that we have, uh, that our Bound Locator works with. If I scroll down, you can see it shows me that it's found results for January 10th, 2014. It shows me what site each uh, it applies for both the bound and the daily editions. And if I click on it, well, let's say we're, we want to compare a term to, to, to see where a particular term falls within a particular day. So let's just use the term house because we know we're going to find the term house for House of Representatives. And if I click on that, our system goes in and it says, okay, I'm going to look for this term house and it's showing us the daily edition versus the bound edition. I can go in and click on those if I want, but you can see very easily that it's talking about the journal of the speaker here, the journal of the speaker here, the chairs examine the journal, the chairs examine, ex examine the journal. So you can see very easily how our system has gone in and done an analysis and you can jump between the two tools. So let me jump back. And what we're going to do is we're going to jump in and we're going to talk about very quickly the different sections that are found within um, a particular congressional record day. Uh, let me just jump into 2021 and we'll scroll down to, okay, so we're updated as of Friday. And if I jump in here, the Congressional Record Day, any particular Congressional Record Day has four sections. So it's going to have a House section for the House of Representatives, a Senate section typically, a extension of remarks, and a daily digest. Here you can see that the Senate, we can see right here, it says the Senate was not in session today. The next meeting will be held on Monday, March 22nd, 2021. So there isn't a Senate section in this particular day, but it tells us why. House of Representatives here. It, it shows us they had a uh, designation of the speaker pro tempore. They had a prayer. 
um, with the journal, the Pledge of Allegiance, the announcement of this by the speaker, and then they go on to speaking about inciting political violence. Obviously, that's been a topic that's been in the news quite a lot recently. Extension of remarks. So the the extension of remarks is uh, it contains speeches, tributes, and other things that weren't necessarily actually spoken about on either the House or the Senate floor, but then uh, either the um, the senator or the House representative wanted to have added into the record. So here we can see, um, for example, uh, on the Honorable Kathy Castor uh, mentions that she, uh, she missed a vote for a, a roll call number 94 on the 18th of March. And had she been present, she would have voted yay on roll call, uh, roll call vote number 94. So here it's just a, a way for the representatives to add in information that maybe they weren't able to speak about on a particular day or that they wanted to have within the record for historical reasons. And then finally, the Daily Digest is a, is a very powerful tool in the congressional record. This is really, it summarizes the day's floor and committee activities and serves as a kind of a table of contents for each issue. Uh, so in this case, we can see here uh, chamber action in the Senate, obviously nothing because they did not um, uh, meet that day. But the House of Representatives, it shows us that the Republic bills and resolutions introduced and it tells us what pages they were introduced on. Additional co-sponsors. Uh, uh, there was a moment of silence uh, for the victims of the shootings in Georgia and so on. And this makes it very easy for us to go in and find that material on any particular day. So if you know that something occurred on or around a particular day, you maybe don't know the best terms to search for. This is a great way to kind of jump in, do some kind of old fashioned research, read the actual page and, and, and help. It helps you jump into that direction and find what it is that you're looking for. So what else is available in this database? Um, oh, just jump back one too far get back into the congressional record, the congressional documents database. So in addition to the congressional record, which goes back to 1873, we have the Congressional Globe. That takes us back to 1833 and forward to 1873, where the congressional record took over. Going back even further, we have the Register of Debates, which, which takes us back to 1824. And then even further than that, we have the Annals of Congress, and that takes us back to 1789. So that's the first Congress that existed in the United States. So really, right within this database, you can look and see on any particular day, what was Congress up to? What did they debate? What were what did the proceedings entail from the first Congress all the way up through, um, in this case, Monday, excuse me, Friday. Um, we also have uh, a, a huge collection of congressional hearings. The congressional, we, I just checked, we are five short of 75,000 hearings within the, uh, this particular database. You can sort them many different ways if you're interested in a particular Congress, particular chamber, so the House or the Senate, even a particular committee. Um, in this case, we could say, you know, I'm interested in the, um, 111th Congress House, and I, I, don't, I don't know what committee, but I'm interested in the affordable and affordable care. Um, and I'm searching for the Affordable Care, for the Affordable Care Act. Some of you might not know, um, on March 23rd, 2010, so 11 years ago today, the Affordable Care Act was signed into law. So we're, we have a, an, a bit of an anniversary here. Um, so here I did a search for um, hearings regarding uh, within the 111th Congress in just the House of Representatives, search for the term affordable care. And here we've gotten 62 results that um, are, for the most part, referring to the material regarding the Affordable Care Act. In addition to that, we have thousands of Congressional Research Service reports. So the Congressional Research Service is effectively the, the, the research service for um, Congress. They are nonpartisan. Same for the Congressional Budget Office. So they do all sorts of research on the costs of legislation um, that Congress is looking to introduce. Yet, yet again, a nonpartisan um, resource for Congress. And we also have about 7,000 committee prints in here and growing. Now, Let's talk about some of the other material that we have in Heine Line. So that, that this is all um, the, the proceedings of Congress, what is going on on any particular day. 
we also have um, the U.S. Federal Legislative History Library. So what is a U.S. Federal Legislative History? As a particular piece of legislation goes through the process of becoming a law, all sorts of different documentation is created. So everything from that initial bill that gets introduced into the House or the Senate, all the amended bills, the, you know, the bills that go back and forth between the chambers, all the way up through that final bill that then gets goes to the president in most cases to be signed into law. There is a ton of House and Senate documents, reports, hearings, and so on that go on in between. We take all that material or our authors take all of that material. We put it into chronological format. We add all the re relevant information. So the document numbers, authors, if there's a particular author on a report, for example, and we make it completely uh, searchable via full text searchable as well as metadata searchable. So let's, since we talked about the Affordable Care Act, let's kind of keep going with that. And I'm gonna jump into, um, well, let me back up real quick right now. What we're looking at is I jumped in the U.S. Federal Legislative History Titles Collection, and we can browse by title, by default, who the author is, particular date that the title was published, not the act. So this would be, let's say, for example, we have a legislative history in here for the Affordable Care Act. The act was passed in 2010. The publication came out in 2011. So you're going to see the date of the publication. And then what subjects those, those different public titles cover here. You can also browse by public law number and the popular name of, of the um, legislation. We also have a, something called sources of compiled legislation with, within this particular database. And this is an, a fantastic piece of uh, material that allows us to do some searching about um, the different legislation we have in here. So for example, let's take popular name or public law number. Well, we know we're talking about the Affordable Care Act. So I'm gonna put in Affordable Care. And I'm gonna just run that search. And I put it in quotes because it's a phrase. Now I came up here, I have two results. The first one is the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. So that's the Affordable Care Act that everyone knows about. If I click on it, it's gonna open up a whole new page specifically about the, the Affordable Care Act. Now here, we, if we wanted, we can browse by this particular Congress and get the list of public laws for that Congress. Uh, we can also search across the sources of compiled legislative histories again. But here we're looking at public law number 111-148, which is the Affordable Care Act. If we wanna know articles that cite this particular law, we can click on it. This is the bill number that's associated with that law. And even the statute um, that was passed prior to it becoming codified, we jump over to that. Now here we're seeing a couple uh, titles that are erroneously in here, and I've, I've let our publication or um, production people know that, and that'll be corrected. But here below those, we see first oops, a healthcare reform, a legislative history of the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, Public Law Number One Eleven One Forty Eight, and we'll jump into that in just a moment. That's seventeen volumes, and that's an entire legislative history uh, about the uh, Affordable Care Act. Then below it is a ton of different resources that are regarding that particular piece of legislation. So some of them are linked to material that is available in Heinlein. Line. So for example, this, uh, this material from Food and Drug Law Journal, which is the unofficial legislative history of the Biologics Price Co Competition and Innovation Act 2009, which was related and so on. Um, but, but in this case, I'm gonna click on the legislative history. And here we're, what we're seeing is all the different volumes that are comprised that particular legislative history. If I click on cumulative contents, this is going to take me and show all of the material in every single one of those volumes. And why this is important is sometimes you don't exactly know the specific piece of legislation or legislative material that you're looking for. So if we jump in here, we can see there's the title page and the acknowledgments, introduction. And now we see first, okay, here's the, the actual law, the public law that um, the Affordable Care Act became. If I click on it, here it is, an act. And you can even see here, as I mentioned, it was signed March 23rd, 2010. And if we scroll down, we can actually read that law. Now, if I go back, often what we do is we put that law first. This is what we came to, that final law. And pr prior to it is the material that that led up to that law. So here's that 
First, we have here House Report providing for the Senate amendments to the bill. The, the bill was House Report uh, 3590. And we can go down. We have here's the House bill, the House bill document number three. These are amendments to the House bill. And as we go down, here's a bunch of presidential remarks. And what I'm doing is I'm here as I'm showing you that we're taking all this different material that went into the creation of this law. We put it together, made it available so you can see the legislative intent. And what and by, by that, I mean, what was the purpose of, of Congress doing the things that they did that went into the production of this law? And you can find it and search it all in one place. Now, let's jump back. We talked about the statute uh, that that was the uh, the uh, Affordable Care Act before it became codified. We have all of the U.S. statutes at large available within Heinlein Line, and they go back to Volume One, which I believe was in. Let's scroll way down, 1789, and we bring that up to the most current statutes available. And it, within here, you can search by public law number, statute citation, and as always, um, full text searching along with the um, uh, popular names as and the official name of, of each act. And then one more I want to talk about before we dive into the serial set is the uh, Government Accountability Reports and Comptroller General Decisions. So the GAO, the Government Accountability Office, this is a, effectively the, um, the auditor for, um, for Congress. They're making sure that everyone is on the up and up. And what we can do here is we can search, you can just go through and find any, these are, reports are going to cover all sorts of different things within um, that, that Congress has ever kind of done research on or, or talked about. So here we can do something like, um, if I search for aircraft, carrier. Now, I'm not sure that I'm actually going to get a result on this. I just thought it might be cool to look up. And here we go. We have 517 results for the term aircraft carrier, Navy's aircraft carrier program investment strategy options. So there's all sorts of material that you can find within the GAO uh, reports regarding the money that the Congress is or is planning to spend um, on any given uh, topic. Now let's jump over and talk about the U.S. Congressional Serial Set. This is the big dog in the room. Before I really get into the material too much, I do want to show you um, that and, and address the fact that we are in the process of comp completing the addition of uh, the U.S. Congressional Serial Set into Hine Online. So it's not 100% in there yet. Um, we were scheduled to be completed with it by the end of 2020. Um, the pandemic kind of threw uh, a little wrench into that process uh, with everyone being out of the libraries. We just really weren't able to get our hands on all the material that we had planned on getting our hands on to image into Honda line. But now that everyone's kind of getting back into their offices and we're able to get that flow of material going again, we're back on track to, get, to definitely get all of the material added to Honda line by the end of 2021. And uh, just to show you that, I am right now, I jumped over to a website that we have on the exterior of Hine Online where we talk about the U.S. Congressional Serial Set. You can see that there are 17,767 volumes included in, in this particular title and over 12 million pages. Uh, if I scroll down and show you here, we have 82% of the material completely available within Hine Online, full text searchable. All of it is completely indexed within Hine Online and um, between the material that we have directly on our servers and also material that we link out to the Hattie Trust, we have 95% of the entire congressional serial set currently available within Hine Online. If, and we are in the process of, as I mentioned, still adding material. Uh, we're looking to get some uh, content that we don't have our hands on yet. If you think you might be able to help us uh, get more material and get some more books uh, digitized into Hine Online, if you have some congressional serial set books laying around your library that maybe you don't know what to do with, you know, maybe they're kind of holding the, a door open or something and you want to get rid of them, let us know. We have a, a, a missing volumes Excel sheet here. 
it's updated whenever you know it's always updated whenever we get new material you can click on that and it'll be it'll be up to date so if you're interested in kind of helping us out give that a click and let us know so let's jump back over to the congressional serial set so the congressional serial set as I mentioned, is 17,000 books. And uh, what it is, is a, just one moment. So it's, it's a composite of all, almost all of the House and Senate reports and documents since 1817. So you can see here that we have Congressional Serial Set, the 15th Congress to the 114th Congress. Um, this got, includes committee reports, um, bill uh, related to bills and other matters. It's got presidential co uh, communications to Congress. It's got treaty materials, some executive department publications, and even some um, NGO reports that are available in it. That's kind of the dry side of it, to be honest with you. Uh, the Congressional Serial Set has got an absolute treasure trove of American history available within it. And um, as an example, um, one of the things that an another uh, uh, anniversary that we're celebrating, I suppose, on March 23rd is uh, this today uh, in 1806, uh, the Lewis and Clark expedition left the West Coast. They decided they had enough of the Pacific Ocean and turned around to come back uh, towards civilization at that point. Um, so one of the cool things that's available in the U.S. Congressional Serial Set is the Lewis and Clark's journals and material about the Lewis and Clark expedition. So if I put in here, uh, searching Lewis and Lewis and Clark, and run that search. I'm going to get a lot of material um, because obviously we've talked about Lewis and Clark now in 2020, and we've talked about Lewis and Clark in the 1800s. So what I can do first is if I change my relevant my sorting to the oldest material first, and let that update. You can see here we're talking about in. Oh, that was published in 1834, but we're talking about the appropriations for exploration and the survey of Louisiana. And if I jump to this page, this text might be a little bit hard for you to see, but we are t speaking here about two enterprising conductors of this adventure, Captains Lewis and Clark, have been directed to attempt a passage to the western shore of the South Sea. So here we are literally talking in 1804, and this is in... March 8th of 1804, so prior to their departure, we're, we're talking about ap appropriating money for, for them to even begin this, this journey. Now, within that 1,778 results that I received when I performed that search of, for Lewis and Clark, we their, their reports back are, are included within the congressional serial set and all sorts of material about their, their, um, their adventures on, on, that, on their travels. So let's talk a little bit more about um, how the Congressional Serial Set is set up. And I'm gonna do this quickly because I know I only have a few more minutes. So you can see here, we have a citation lookup tool. You can select a particular document that you like, a type of document that you like. House report, for example, you can then select a Congress if you wanted to, a document number, or if you have a particular citation already, for example, a house report here, you can plug it in and jump right to it. As always, full text searching is available as anything is available, uh, full text searchable in Hine Online. Also, you can browse by uh, volumes and, or excuse me, by Congress and volumes, congressional serial set volumes. Um, it's not the easiest way to get through browsing in the U.S. Congressional Serial Set, and that's why we have set up the search functions that we have set up. It's not really, wasn't necessarily designed to be a browsable uh, uh, tool, but we have it there uh, if you choose to do it that way. One thing I wanted to show you here, and I clicked on the 52nd Congress to show you, um, these are the different uh, Serial Set documents that are available within Hine Online. Um, each one of these is numbered. It's a numbered document. And these little H's you see, um, if, I, if I hover over it, a different colored H, you can see it says this blue H icon indicates that the serial set volume has been digitized and is available within the Heinemann database. 
If I hover over an orange one, it's talking about the fact that it's available in the Hattie Trust, and we can link out to that if you choose to. And then we also have, I'm not sure if I have one within this particular, here we go. This one is gray. This particular volume is not available within the Heinlein line or it's the Hattie Trust. So that for sure is on our missing list and something that we're working to get scanned and available within Heinlein line. As with anything else, um, doing your searching within the congressional series that many different features that we have available, for example, our Venn diagram search. Uh, if I wanna do a search for um, affordable and doctor and medication, I can run that search. And just like always, our Venn diagram search is going to pop up and it's going to show you how that data set compares to the, um, to the terms that you searched for. So we received 280 results for that particular search. And if we want to see what results we would get for doctor, we've got nearly 20,000 results, affordable, 36, nearly 3,700 results, medication, nearly 1,900 results. And of course, we can see where those overlap as well and change. So we can limit that to just the US Congressional Serial Set, the Federal Register, or, or any other areas of congressional material that you're interested in researching within Hide Online. But lastly, I just wanted to point out um, something that we do have available uh, as a link within uh, the US Cong Congressional Serial Set's uh, introduction page. I'll jump here. And that is something that we've worked very hard on called the Secrets of the Serial Set. And if you click on this, this is these are available on the Hunt Online blog. And this is where we've gone in and we have pulled out different topics and different material that we feel are relevant to either the interesting topics that, that you can do research on within Hunt Online, or maybe it's... Um, topical because it's something that's in the news currently and some of these previous installments we have done here are education in america the commonwealth of puerto rico iran iran contra affair apartheid osama bin laden alcatraz space shuttle all these different topics the assassination of jfk the annexation of hawaii and as i mentioned the lewis and clark expedition all these topics and much much more are all available in the U.S. Congressional Serial Set. All the hearings that we have listed, those 75,000 hearings, there's content that you can find in there regarding the assassination of, of JFK. You can find the Cohen hearings from, uh, what, 2016? No, 2018, I believe. Um, it's just an absolute treasure trove of American history, political science history, both uh, deep history and more recent history. And uh, we really recommend that you guys take a, a, a hard look at our congressional materials and you can find just some fantastic material for both you, your faculty and your students. Lastly, but not least, I just wanted to cover just so everyone is aware, all of our uh, support materials. Live chat is available from 8.30 a.m. to 6 o'clock p.m. That's Eastern time. We always welcome you and your students and your faculty to use our live chat feature. We want to help you use Hine Online and get, help you get the most you can out of the database. Of course, we also have our knowledge base and our libguides available. The knowledge base is here with training guides, links to videos, links to uh, the basics and the, you know, the upper level stuff, as well as going deep dives into how Hine Online works. And then finally, of course, our libguides. Um, and these are going to cover all sorts of material, all sorts of different databases. Might be some databases that you don't have access to right now because, you know, we cover, we help a lot of different organizations and a lot of different um, people use, do research. So maybe this, maybe the material you see isn't something that you particularly have access to within Heinlein, but for sure there's going to be material that you do have access to. And we, we welcome you to take our libguides and use them, put them on your, uh, your library websites and use whatever you can to, uh, to help people use Heinlein in the most effective way that they can. So I hope that I didn't bore you and I hope I used your time as best that I uh, could. Does anyone have any questions? I hope Steve was able to answer them as we were going along. Let's see here.
All right. Well, it looks like we had everything covered. Thank you all. You will be receiving a, uh, a link to the webinar uh, in probably tomorrow. And I believe that's everything we had to cover. Tim? Yes, Steve. Uh, someone asked if you could search hearings by keyword. Well, yes. So all the material within Heinlein, within Heinlein yes, is, is full text searchable. So if we go over to the congressional hearings, hearings I'm sorry. I'm just going to jump over there. We're going to jump into hearings. So here we can, for example, I can do a search for, uh, I can either do this in our full text search or down here, and we'll do it up here. Michael Cohen. Something I just mentioned. And here you can see hearing with Michael Cohen, former attorney to the President Donald Trump, hearings before the Committee on Oversight Reform. So yes, you can do full text searching. You can search by the title of, of the hearings. You can search by Congress, Chamber, the committee, many different ways to search across the hearings within Heinlein. So thank you all for coming. Appreciate your time. And I hope you all have a great afternoon.